Hey, what's going on guys? Jason Osborne, J.O. Vision here, back again with another video. And today we're gonna talk Lightroom, but we're not gonna get into anything crazy. I've noticed over the past couple of weeks that I've been asked about very, very simple things uh, about Lightroom, the terminology, uh, what different sliders do, things like that. So here is a warning for all you advanced Lightroom users. If you know Lightroom like the back of your hand, or if you really um, know um, what everything means and does in Lightroom, this video is probably a little too simple for you. This video is going to be the ones for the ones who just started Lightroom, the ones who are looking at that uh, panel of all those sliders and knobs and thinking, what the hell am I gonna do with all this and how can I turn my pictures from the raw to the final edit and actually make them look good? This video is for those people. First, I wanna give a big shout out to all my new subscribers that have subscribed to my channel. I got at least another 10, 15 subscribers in the last two days and I really appreciate it. I do see you guys subscribing to my channel and I just wanna say thank you from the bottom of my heart. It means a lot that you guys are actually listening to the advice that I've been giving and decided that you want to invest your time and spend it with me on my YouTube channel. So I do appreciate that. Okay, so we've got Lightroom open now and I've got a nice picture of my friend Callie here. And basically we are going to discuss everything on this side of the panel or this side of Lightroom screen right here. I'm not gonna get too much into any of like the panel settings or things like that, but I'm really just gonna discuss what some of these things mean to help you guys get a better idea what they control and how you can use them to your benefit to get the kind of picture that you want. All right, so then you have these icons uh, right here, okay? Now this is the crop. If you want to crop your photo, you can click this and it will bring up the photo in the grid, okay? Uh, if you want the perfect dimensions for Instagram, which is what I do usually before I even start touching editing or anything, I go over to Aspect, I click Original, and then I go down to 4x5, 8x10, and I click that. That'll put your grid to the perfect Instagram size, and if you have a landscape photo, it will do that for landscape as well. This is the most biggest size on Inst that Instagram will allow you to have, and it will give you the most real estate on your followers' feed, so when they scroll through, it's gonna be right there, as big as possible, and it can help you gain some attraction to your page. So, we're just gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I'm gonna click that, and that's pretty much all you have to do. Uh, if you want to straighten your photo, say you think it's a little crooked, you can just grab the little uh, side notch right here on the grid, and you can twist and turn uh, until you feel that your photo is straight. And if you mess up and you wanna start with the original as you shot it, just click original, and it'll give you right back to the crop, uh, original crop that you had it. Um, and if you really feel like you, you wanna you know, start all the way over and over, there's a reset button down here, and you can click reset, and it'll just bring your picture right back to exactly how it was when you first loaded it up. This right here is the spot removal tool. Okay, this will help you get rid of any flaws that you see, not only in the skin, but maybe there's a small object or a small tag or a small something that you wanna remove from the photo, that this will definitely get rid of any minor flaws or anything that is small enough in your picture um, and do it with pretty good results. You know, we see this little blemish right here. So what you would do is you would click the spot removal tool. You can use your mouse wheel to make the circle bigger or smaller. Okay, or you can use the bracket signs as well on your keyboard. Uh, right bracket will be bigger, left bracket will be smaller. And you're gonna wanna go over the uh, blemish or whatever you wanna move from the person's face, and you just wanna click it. Lightroom will then select another piece of skin that matches what you clicked that doesn't have the blemish and pretty much copy over it. And as you can see, that blemish is now gone and it's pretty good. Now, there are some things where you can also draw it on and this doesn't work so well. You can draw it and then it'll collect another piece of skin from a different area. The red eye correction, I've never used, not one single time. Uh, here you have your graduated filter, what looks like a rectangle. Now the graduated filter will allow you to create a 
pretty much a fade of any kind of effect that you want in Lightroom. That is what the graduated filter does. Now, obviously I don't want this effect, but this is exactly what it does. Um, it allows you to create a fade in simple terms to your picture. Next to the graduated filter is your radio filter. Now, this is similar to the graduated filter, except for it's an oval or a circle or whatever shape you want. And last but not least up here on this bar right here is the adjustment brush. Now, the adjustment brush is something that I use almost every single time. Not almost, I do use it every single time that I edit my pictures in Lightroom. It is the most powerful tool and it allows you to paint any effect that Lightroom can do on your subject or on your picture. All right, so once we got through most of the tools and everything, we're gonna start talking about the panel. And I'm just gonna go down it real quick. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. So here, very first, treatment, color treatment. Very important, you have your color. If you want to see what your picture will look in a quick black and white, all you have to do is click black and white up here and it will give you a basic black and white picture, okay? Uh, temperature, temperature is the color tone of your picture. So if it's winter outside and you got snow falling, you probably want more of a cool tone. Also, same thing with the warm balance. If it's a summer day and it's hot, everything like that, you wanna give that kind of feeling to your viewer. So you might slide your, your uh, temperature slider over to the right to give it more of a warm feel. That's you know something that you should use a lot. This eyedropper represents the white balance, okay? Now the white balance is basically the overall balance of light that is supposed to be true to the picture. Now if you wanna get an accurate white balance, you can pick a white piece of the picture and it will automatically set the white balance to what it thinks it should be based on your selection with the eyedropper. And it's very helpful and it's pretty accurate for the most part. You might have to tweak something here or there, but that's how it goes. So exposure, what is exposure? Exposure is the amount of light uh, in a picture. When they say your picture is overexposed, that means that it's blown out, it's washed out like this. When they say it's underexposed, they mean it's too dark and your subject can't be seen. You can adjust that with this. If you mess up and you wanna start with your normal picture where the exposure was at, double click on the notch and it'll go back to the center. Contrast. That is the balance between whites and darks, okay? If you have no contrast in your picture, it's gonna be real faded out. No darks are gonna really be in there. If you have it all the way set up, the darks are gonna be really heavy, your color's gonna turn really rich, and things like that. Find a good balance with your contrast. Uh, it could really enhance your pictures. Highlights. Highlights represent the, the shiny areas or the bright areas on a subject's face or in a picture. So, Basically, if we zoom in here, all the highlights are areas like this. This is a highlight. This is a highlight. Down here is a highlight. Over here is a highlight. Uh, the little sparkle in her eye, that's a highlight. Those are all highlights, okay? And that's what the highlights really uh, control. If I bring it all the way down, it's gonna fade and turn the brightness down of those areas. If we zoom in again, you can see those areas aren't as bright or as shiny. If I turn it all the way up, they do get brighter and they do get a little bit more shiny. And it's important to learn your highlights because they can really affect the picture. Um, and they can expose more of your picture that you didn't think you had. Your shadows, that's pretty much self-explanatory. Any shadows in the picture will be controlled by this. Uh, some dark areas, things like that. Even shadows on the face. If you turn your shadows all the way up, shadows are pretty much non-existent. Shadows, uh, the shadow controller is really good to bring out some detail in dark areas of the picture. If you feel that it's not a clean edit and you want to uh, pretty much bring some more details in, it's a good way to do it. And bring it all the way down if you want, and your blacks as well. Uh, your presence is your clarity, your vibrance, and saturation. Now, if you are shooting portraits, I will say do not put too much clarity on your picture, especially if it's a female, all right? Female portraits should look softer. They need to have great skin, things like that. But you should never, in my opinion, go past 10 or 12 when it comes to clarity in portraits, even with guys. Your vibrance is basically the brightness of the colors in the picture. And your saturation is basically the control of how much color is in the picture. The tone curve, on the left side of the diagram, it represents the dark side of uh, the picture. The light, the light side of the picture is represented by the right side. And you can use this line to control 
how much or how less of it is being shown in the picture, all right? Uh, you can also click RGB and it'll give you one for blue, green, and red. And that's pretty much what the tone curve does. It allows you to control the tone colors of the picture. Now we come into our color section. Uh, HSL stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. Color uh, basically allows you to select every color that you can and black and white as well, all right? HSL is really good. Um, Hue basically is the shade of the color. From red, you can go from red to pink. The saturation is pretty much how much of that color is prevalent in the photo. So if you want your color to be super red, all the reds to really look rich and super red, you're gonna bring your dial all the way over to the right. If you wanna take the red out, bring it all the way to the left. And that's with every color. The luminance is the shine or also the brightness of the color is very similar to vibrance. Black and white is the same thing. Just because it's black and white doesn't mean that you can't control the colors that are in black and white. And those can affect your black and white images as you can see right here. So it's always good to play around with the colors in your black and white pictures and you'll be able to change the kind of tone and feel that you're getting with your black and whites. Coming down to split toning. Split toning is really good for also creating more tones. Basically, this allows you to uh, color your highlights and your shadows. Okay, so we have sharpening. This square right here will allow you to get a zoomed in look to whatever part is uh, that you wanna see can be sharpened. Uh, I'm gonna put a, the square right over Callie's eye. You can click this little thing right here and it'll go over to the diagram and you can move it to any part of the photo that you wanna see. Masking will allow you to control what in the picture is being sharpened. So you're gonna hold your Alt key and you're gonna pr press and hold the masking notch and it's gonna turn white, okay? White is, being rep is representing the sharpness of the, uh, of the picture. So anything that is white, which is the whole picture right now, is being sharpened. So obviously I don't want the whole entire picture to be like crazy sharpened. Only really want the, you know, the, the edges of her, the eyes. So you go and hold Alt, click your masking, and you slide it over until the white starts to disappear, and it's only covering what you want to be sharpened. Now, as you can see now, the, the outline of her is being sharpened, her face and the details, the eyes, the nose, the lips, her hair outline, those are all being sharpened. Um, noise reduction uh, pretty much takes that low light grain or distortion out of your picture. But there is also a, a draw to using a noise reduction is that it makes things a lot softer. All right, so moving on to lens corrections. Now lens correction is very helpful. Uh, if you have a lens that like a wide angle lens and you get a lot of distortion, I click remove chromatic aberration and I click enable profile correction. Lightroom will read the kind of lens that you shot the picture with and usually that lens profile comes up as you can see right here. I shot this with a Canon 50 millimeter 1.8 and it will put in the corrections for that lens to give it the most true uh, appearance. Transform, I don't use too much. Basically, it gives you some cool effects with your, your pictures. You can stretch it out. Also, you can straighten it automatically with this. I like to go to vert level and usually uh, it gives you what it thinks is the most level uh, picture. Uh, post crop vignetting. Now I use this a lot. I pretty much love to vignette all my portraits, but I don't go OD. Basically you slide your slider to the right. Uh, it's gonna give you that nice little white vignette. I like the dark ones because it allows me to, once again, have my subjects pop from the background a little bit. And I really just put a little touch on. I don't do much. Grain, if you have a black and white picture or if you want to give a certain style to your picture and introduce some grain, which can be a good thing, you know, for, you know, you want that vintage feel to your pics or you want uh, to give it like a film look. Uh, grain is good and you can move this dial and it'll make your picture, it'll introduce some grain into it. Um, I've used it in certain occasions. Um, I don't use it typically, but it can definitely uh, give your picture a different type of feel if that's what you're going for. Dehaze can be very, very helpful uh, in such, certain situations, especially in bright, sunny days when you're getting things kind of like hazed over or washed out. Uh, it can bring in some more clarity into your picture, but it's basically another form of contrast. Camera calibration, 
I really don't mess with any of that. And that's pretty much it. That is your basic panel for Lightroom and their definitions and what they do. So I really hope that this video helped you out today. I know starting Lightroom can be very intimidating, not knowing what the sliders do, moving them back and forth, and then not getting the picture that you want can be extremely frustrating. So I made this video hopefully to help you guys out. If you do have an idea or if there's a technique or an option of Lightroom that I haven't discussed in the video and you want me to do a tutorial on it, please leave a comment in the section below and I got you. I respond to everybody's comments and I love conversing with you guys, so don't be shy, send me a nice message. Also, if you did learn something on this video, hit that like button for your boy. I need those likes. Go ahead, hit it for me. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, why haven't you? It's 2018. I've got so much new content in store for you guys. It's not even funny. So hit that subscribe button and shout out once again to all my new subscribers. I really do appreciate you guys. You guys are the best. This is Jason Osborne, J.O. Vision. If you want to see some of my pictures on Instagram, go ahead, check me out. J.O. Vision right there. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm out. Peace.